For most people, boarding a flight is tinged with a tiny bit of doubt and what ifs. But we put those thoughts behind us and focus on the destination and trust that everything is in place for the flight to be as safe as it can be. However, for those with aerophobia, their fear of flying is so extreme that they can't even face stepping inside the plane, let alone for it to take off and fly. Of course, that is an irrational fear, as statistics show that air travel has the lowest death rates of any other form of transport. An aerophobic will mitigate the risk by never stepping foot in a plane, but for the rest of us, we leave it up to chance. Like we do with many other decisions we make throughout our lifetimes, in this video, we do not want to add to anyone's fear, just highlight some of the most dangerous flight routes in the world. So if you are a nervous flyer, you can avoid them. We haven't included no fly zones like those over worn torn countries, but we may do a separate video on those if you'd like to see that. We are just looking at viable routes that have some element of risk attached to them. And some may surprise you. Let's begin. Flying over the Himalayas. The Himalayas is the tallest mountain range in the world, with the jewel in the crown being Mount Everest, standing at 29,032 feet. Most commercial planes fly at an altitude of 33 to 42,000 feet when they reach cruising level, somewhere in the lower stratosphere, and typically this positions the aircraft within a safety zone far above the ground and above most turbulent patterns. So to fly over the Himalayas, a plane would have to reach a much higher altitude to clear the mountain top safely. Most commercial planes, particularly larger jetliners, cannot fly safely at these high altitudes. Even aircraft that are physically capable of flying at high altitudes avoid doing so because it's risky. The higher you go into the atmosphere, the colder it gets, posing the possibility that the fuel will freeze and the oxygen levels will drop. With turbulence and high winds in the area as well, it would make for a pretty terrifying journey. If for some reason a commercial flight had to fly over the Himalayas and it did experience a mid-air emergency, there is little or nothing a pilot could do to avert disaster, as there are no flat areas to perform an emergency landing. And if by some miracle they did land, a rescue attempt would be near impossible due to the terrain and inhospitable conditions. However, that doesn't mean there are no flights at all. After all, there are several cities that are completely surrounded by the Himalayas, such as Kathmandu and Lhasa, and they have airports that are served mainly by regional flights. It is also home to the most dangerous airport in the world, Lukla in Nepal, that is perched at 28,000 meters, or 9,200 foot, on a tiny outcrop, nestled amongst the world's tallest mountains. And that's the one that's made this list. Take a look at takeoff and landing on this tiny airstrip. It's certainly not for the faint-hearted. Lukla can only accommodate small turboprop planes that in themselves carry risks, so it's no surprise that over the years, several accidents have occurred in and around the airport. One of the worst occurred in 2008, when a de Havilland Canada DHC-6 Twin Otter 300, operated by Yeti Airlines, approached Lukla Airport in poor visibility and without radar signaling. The aircraft hit rocks near the runway, crashed and caught on fire. Of the 19 passengers and crew on board, only the captain survived. If the mountain range is hard enough to negotiate, parts of it also border India and China, two countries that have engaged in border skirmishes in the past. Not something you want to get caught up in during your flight. So in short, it is possible to fly over the Himalayas, but it is not practical or safe to do so. Antarctica Antarctica is one of the most inhospitable places on the planet. Everything about it is extreme, with temperatures dropping as low as minus 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit, coastal winds that can reach 200 miles an hour, and violent snow blizzards. 
so it's no surprise that planes avoid flying over the area at all costs. The first and most obvious reason is the climate. Even before thinking about landing, just flying over the area has its dangers. The ice will pose a huge problem, as keeping a plane de-iced is essential even in normal cold conditions. So flying over the impossibly frigid conditions of Antarctica, keeping the plane safe to fly, would prove very difficult and dangerous. Then there is the lack of visibility. The area is subject to constant whiteouts, which can be incredibly dangerous for pilots to deal with under the best of conditions, let alone those in Antarctica. A whiteout is a weather condition in which the contours and landmarks in snow-covered zones become almost indistinguishable, making navigation extremely dangerous. The polar regions also have other navigation concerns in the form of the magnetic fields, which permeate them. These can interfere with magnetic navigational tools, meaning pilots are practically flying blind. There's also a massive lack of infrastructure, let alone towers and airports that help aeroplanes take off and land. There are few to no set flight paths and nothing to help you if you need to land urgently. However, it is technically possible to fly to Antarctica. It has 20 airports, although no developed public access or airstrips, so they are basically just landing spaces for either helicopters and or fixed wing aircraft. These landing areas are either gravel, sea ice, blue ice, or compacted snow. But due to the risks involved, landing in Antarctica is subject to severe restrictions and limitations. And in the winter, when the continent is in permanent darkness, only emergency flights can land with burning barrels of fuel used to outline a runway. Most of the human settlements on Antarctica are research centers so planes don't make pleasure visits to the area, as it takes special training for a human to get acclimatized to the cold. However, in 2021, for the first time, an Airbus A340, operated by Portuguese charter airline Highfly, landed in Antarctica. Take a look at this incredible snowy landing. That was rare, and generally Antarctica is an icy, no-fly zone for most flights, although some sightseeing planes do still fly over the area, and it was one of these trips that saw the worst ever crash over Antarctica. It happened on the 28th of November 1979, when Air New Zealand Flight 901, on a scheduled sightseeing trip, flew into Mount Erebus on Ross Island, Antarctica, killing all 237 passengers and 20 crew on board. Initially, it was thought the pilot was to blame. However, it later transpired that the accident was caused by a change made to the coordinates of the flight path the night before the disaster that the crew weren't informed about. The accident remains the deadliest in the history of Air New Zealand. The Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico is an ocean basin and a marginal sea of the Atlantic Ocean primarily surrounded by the North American continent. This vast body of water is avoided by most commercial flights, apart from large passenger jets. And there is a simple reason for this. Some of the smaller planes or personal aircraft do not have the equipment to make the long crossing safely. This coupled with the unpredictable weather make the chance of rescue if something did go wrong almost impossible. And the thought of spending hours in the cold, rough water waiting for ultimate doom is not a pleasant prospect. For years, there have been conspiracy theories surrounding flights across the Gulf of Mexico, and some people believe that pilots do not fly over it because at its center is an alien base. There is no evidence of this, but in truth, the most significant danger in the Gulf of Mexico is the violent hurricanes that lurk in the region. However, airlines don't avoid the area altogether as hurricane and tropical storm clouds are low. So large passenger planes can fly over the clouds and avoid the storms. Although it would be dangerous for smaller aircraft to attempt these flights. So if your flight does take you over the Gulf of Mexico and you are in a large passenger jet, be reassured the risk of running out of fuel, getting caught in a hurricane, or having to make an emergency landing in the sea is very low and is no riskier than flying over land. However, if you're thinking of attempting the flight in a smaller plane, so many things could go wrong. And since 1978, 11 small planes have crashed in the area, 
killing 18 people. The latest was in December 2022, when an Australian family of three crashed in the Gulf of Mexico, when their Piper Cherokee PA-28 came down off the coast of Venice Beach. Preliminary inquiries into the accident found the plane, piloted by Christian Kath, reached an altitude of just 22 meters after takeoff before rapidly descending. Christian's wife and daughter's bodies were recovered, but his was never found. Indonesia. Indonesia has the worst air safety records in the world ahead of Russia, Iran, and Pakistan. And in the past decade alone, 697 people have lost their lives in air disasters. If that wasn't bad enough, once you land safely, some of the airports in Indonesia pose security, environmental, and operational risks. Since 1945, Indonesia has seen 104 civilian airliner accidents, with over 1,300 related fatalities, the highest of all the Asian countries. And in 2007, all Indonesian carriers were placed on the EU air safety list, a blacklist of airliners that fall short of the EU's international safety standards. And although this was lifted in 2018, accidents are still happening. However, this hasn't stopped the boom in air travel to this unique country, with its 17,000 islands, 6,000 of which are inhabited. Tourists flock to places like Java, Sumatra, Borneo, and Bali, to name a few, in search of their paradise beaches and rainforests. But the stormy tropical weather that creates these stunning areas of natural beauty wreak havoc for flights, and Indonesia has one of the highest instances of thunderstorms and lightning strikes anywhere in the world. The poor weather conditions was a factor in 58% of accidents in Indonesia, compared to a global average of 21% to 26 If that wasn't enough, there are also volcano eruptions to deal with, which throw pumes of ash into the air, that get sucked into jet engines which can cause them to fail. By far the worst crash in Indonesia's history happened in 1997, when 234 passengers and crew lost their life when their Airbus A300B4, operated by national carrier Garuda Indonesia, crashed in a smog-shrouded ravine in North Sumatra. The cause of the accident was confirmed as a combination of communication and instrument error. The latest accident was in 2021, when 62 passengers and crew died when their Boeing 737-500 domestic flight from Jakarta to Pontianic, Borneo, disappeared from radar four minutes after takeoff and crashed into the Java Sea. The flight had taken off amid heavy monsoon rain, although the cause of the crash was deemed to be a combination of maintenance and pilot error. So although parts of Indonesia are stunning, their air safety record, especially domestic flights, is far from perfect. And lastly, we of course could not do a video about dangerous flight routes without mentioning the Bermuda Triangle, an area in the Atlantic Ocean that has been shrouded in mystery and has long been linked to unexplained disappearances, alien abductions and other supernatural occurrences. It's no surprise that anyone due to fly over the area gets a little nervous. In fact, this relatively small slice of the ocean has such a bad reputation that some people even refuse to travel anywhere near it. So where exactly is the Bermuda Triangle and what destinations would fly you directly over its center? While the Bermuda Triangle is an area of the Atlantic Ocean bordered by the southern eastern coast of the US, Bermuda and the islands of Cuba, Hispaniola, Jamaica and Puerto Rico, the site covers between 500,000 and 1.5 million square miles in a rough triangle shape. Around 50 ships and 20 aircraft have gone missing in the triangle. However, two incidents stand out and have spawned the conspiracy theories that have endured ever since. The first was the USS Cyclops, a vast US Navy ship that vanished in March 1918 during a voyage between the West Indies and Baltimore. All 306 people on board and around 11,000 tons of manganese were lost when it disappeared, never to be seen again. The second incident was in 1945, when five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers, known as Flight 19, vanished during a routine navigational training flight. Radio transmissions before contact was lost indicated the pilots were confused and disorientated. The last words uttered were, It looks like we are entering white water 
were completely lost. All 14 men disappeared that day, along with their planes, and 13 more were lost when the PBM Mariner attempted a rescue. Conspiracy theorists have proposed several reasons why disappearances and disasters occur in the Bermuda Triangle. Some have claimed that the area is a hotbed of alien activity, suggesting that extraterrestrial beings are abducting humans for study. Others believe that it's the real-life location of the lost continents of Atlantis, therefore making it a portal to another dimension. Considering the superstition surrounding the Bermuda Triangle, many travelers assume that airline pilots actively avoid the area. However, that is not the case. Daily, many flights crisscross the Bermuda Triangle, indicating that the area is not actively avoided, and you only have to check a flight tracker to see that it's quite a busy route. Anyone traveling from Florida to Puerto Rico and other areas in the Caribbean are likely to pass through it, as well as passengers traveling east to the Caribbean and South America. It's worth remembering from a scientific point of view, there is a more plausible explanation for the incidents. With the unpredictable weather being the main factor, another explanation is geomagnetic anomaly in the area that can cause a ship or plane's navigation to point to true north rather than magnetic north leading to navigational failures, although this happens in other parts of the world as well. For many though, the superstitions and stories about the Bermuda Triangle make them believe it is a cursed route that should be avoided at all costs. What are your thoughts? Lastly, we'd like to mention a few no-fly zones, areas of the world that if pilots stray into, could result in aggressive military response. Areas like this include Iraq, Iran, Yemen, Libya, Syria, and many highly secretive military bases around the world. So that's it for this video. We hope this does not give you a fear of flying, as flying truly is one of the safest ways of traveling. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next video.